Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday. Well, we all know that there are a lot of people involved in this Jeffrey Epstein situation that are looking to get their fingers on some dough. And we're not talking about the survivors here, folks. We're talking about other people, such as the Virgin Islands. And, you know, I'm on record saying that not one single dollar should go to anybody but the survivors of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. And anybody else who is trying to wiggle their way in to get some of the money is scum, in my opinion. Nobody deserves that money besides the survivors. The ladies who wake up every single day with the trauma hung squarely on their shoulders. The ladies that still, to this day, are dealing with people calling them liars, people calling them all sorts of disgusting names, and yet they still find the courage to every single day get up and speak out against what occurred and what happened to them. And for anybody to get in the way of them getting a cash settlement is just absolutely, positively disgusting in my opinion. All right? Nobody is entitled to this money. Not his brother, nobody. The only people that are entitled to this money are the people who survived his reign of terror. It shouldn't be this difficult. It shouldn't be this te- this tangled web that these people have to navigate through to even get a little a little piece of change. All right? It's ridiculous. That that this needs to be accelerated and the people who are trying to fish to get some dough out of this like uh Miss George from the Virgin Islands should be very, very, very ashamed of themselves. And that's what our article is going to talk about this morning. Uh, It's an article from the Miami Herald, and the headline is, Free for All Over Jeffrey Epstein's Estate Gets More Tangled. The author is Kevin G. Hall. All right, on to the article. Jeffrey Epstein is gone, but the fight over his estate involving lawyers, creditors, survivors and the U.S. Virgin Islands, to name a few, is far from settled. And it's getting more complicated all the time. And it shouldn't be, folks. It doesn't have to be complicated. Everything is made to be complicated, but it does not have to be, all right? Let's get these girls the the money that they deserve. Let's get this trust moving and kicked into high gear. And let's distribute this money in a, a proper and timely fashion, please. And to the right people. Most importantly, the right people must get their share. The Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands has asked a judge to let her get involved in the decision-making in the settlement of the estate of the disgraced financier. Think about that for a minute, folks. The Attorney General of the Virgin Islands wants to get involved in the decision-making in the settlement of the case? Yeah, that's going to be a solid negative, Miss George. All right? That's going to be a solid negative. Why don't you just go back and go back, crawl into whatever hole you crawled out of? Where were you while these girls were being abused? Where was your predecessor? Is your predecessor not in trouble for accepting loot from Epstein? Nah, nobody's going to get in trouble, but you want to make sure that you get your cut, right? You have to wet your beak, right? On both ends. Gross. The, The attorney general is absolutely gross from the Virgin Islands, in my opinion. She has also objected to the creation of a victim's victim's compensation fund, at least one that would be run out of New York. Again, look, it's not about the the survivors for this lady. That's why she's so gross to me. It's all a money grab. And I wonder how much of it would end up in her pocket directly. Because we all know that they're shysty down there. We all know that they're not running things correctly down there. And you know how we know that? Well, we know that because they looked the other way the whole entire time Jeffrey Epstein was abusing these girls, all right? Not just before he got arrested the first time, folks. Oh, no, no, no. But afterwards, oh, afterwards, this sick, disgusting MF was still going to the Virgin Islands, still bringing young girls with him, and he was even abusing girls in St. Thomas. So don't act like you didn't know. If you knew, why didn't you arrest him? Liars. Sorting out Epstein's financial affairs and divvying up the proceeds were made more difficult when Epstein rewrote his will two days before he was found dead in his cell last August at a New York lockup, where he was awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. And again, to think that Jeffrey Epstein wouldn't have done something like this to make things harder for these victims is naive. 
he definitely would want it to make, he would definitely want to make it as hard as possible for anybody to access his loot. That's the kind of guy he was for sure. So I could totally see why he would uh, whip up his his uh, will and and move everything into the uh, when he rewrote it and he moved it into the trust. I could understand why he would do that, right? To try and make it harder. He's that he's that big of a scumbag that he wants it to be as hard as possible on these survivors, even after the fact. Now, what's interesting to me is that he wrote the he cha- he rewrote his will two days before he was found dead. So. It's always interesting when you add that to the the mix, right? A little bit more spice, a little bit more intrigue. He was arrested on federal sex trafficking charges last July, eight months after the Miami Herald published Perversion of Justice, a series of stories examining the extraordinary plea deal ten years earlier that absolved him of trafficking allegations. Oh, not just absolved him. Oh, no, 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 no. But everybody in his orbit. orbit. It was like a blanket immunity deal that anybody who was around Epstein anybody who could have been involved in this well you're now protected and that my friends is absolutely positively a perversion of justice Denise George the attorney general filed a motion to intervene before the superior court of the Virgin Islands arguing that the government must protect its interest as, as executors make decisions about how Epstein's creditors are paid and his accusers are compensated. Intervention is particularly necessary given the potential conflict of interest in the, of the executors in administering the estate and in particular proposing to hire and compensate designers to administer a voluntary fund to compensate victims trafficked by Jeffrey Epstein. George argued in a complaint filed on January 23rd, but made public on Monday. A parallel motion was also filed by George on January 23rd, opposing a plan offered by executors of the estate to create the New York-based Victims Compensation Fund. Also made public this week was a court request by the estate's executors to pay a whopping $581,000 in legal bills to the Virgin Islands law firm of Erica Keller Halls, which helped create Epstein's shell companies and did the legal work on his controversial purchase of Great St. James Island from a buyer who did not want to sell to him. George brought a multi-count indictment in a civil enforcement action against the Epstein estate on January 15th, effectively staking a huge claim on Epstein's estate. Again, this lady is absolutely gross. She really thinks that this is going to go over. She really thinks that the lawyers for the survivors are not going to challenge this, that people are not going to be in in a rage over this. She really believes that she'll get away with trying to get some of this dough. She is not getting one single cent, all right? At least she should not get one single cent. The little-known attorney general, who took office last April, wants the Virgin Islands to take back both local islands that Epstein had developed, Great St. James and Little St. James, worth more than $80 million. On January 16th, she filed a criminal lien on the estate. The attorney general argues that Epstein used his two islands to to support his sex trafficking scheme. George's indictment alleges direct sexual abuse of minors, some as young as 12, by Epstein on his islands. Some of it happened in 2018, she alleged, a full decade after his non-prosecution agreement in Florida that gave him immunity from federal sex trafficking charges and allowed him to plead guilty to minor offenses with limited jail time. All right, well, it happened in 2018, like we discussed before, right? Well... It would never have happened if you people did not turn your backs, did not turn your heads, did not accept his money, and did not accept what was happening to these girls on that island. You all knew, Miss George. Your whole entire crew knew. Everybody knew. The whole government, okay? And to act naive now, and to act like nobody knew, because you want to make a cash grab? Boy, that is a terrible, terrible look. I suggest that Miss George reaches out to some of the, the survivors of Jeffrey Epstein and talks to them directly, all right? Absolutely disgusting to see the government of the Virgin Islands make this, this move. It, it really it makes me mad, and it makes me ill almost. It's, it's disgusting. Epstein updated his will, will two days before he was found dead at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Manhattan last August 10th. That update 
included adding his two islands to a trust that makes it harder for his accusers to get at his assets, which were valued at the time of his detention at $550 million or more. I'm going to go with or more. Has everybody checked under his bed? Well, nobody's been out to New Mexico to raid the ranch yet, so he probably has about, uh, you know, a couple billion stash there. I mean, obviously, that's just kidding. But you, you get what I'm talking about, right? Who knows how much money this guy actually had? If you think it was just the $550 million that, he, that was uh, stated in bank records and whatnot, well... You have another thing coming. This is not the kind of guy that discloses all of his dough. This is a shady son of a bitch who was into money laundering, was into all sorts of, uh, all kinds of crazy wire fraud. And this guy definitely has millions stashed somewhere else at the very least. Five days after his death, Epstein's longtime lawyers Darren Indyke and Richard Kahn moved to be declared executors who would settle the estate. They were involved in the financial structures that George alleges were created to hide Epstein's ownership of and activities on his two islands. And that's why, almost half a year after Epstein's death, which was labeled a suicide, allegedly, despite suspicions by his brother and others, the government of the Virgin Islands is trying to intervene. The executors of Epstein's estate, Darren K. Indyke and Richard D. Kahn, were and are involved in various Epstein business entities that are alleged to share liability in Epstein's civil and criminal violations in the Virgin Islands and elsewhere. George wrote at the conclusion of her intervention motion, signed by the head of the civil division, Ariel M. Smith, Therefore, there is no means, absent intervention, to ensure government's interest in its claims and enforcing the laws of the Virgin Islands are protected. Again, the government, the Virgin Islands, never a mention of the survivors. And just like the royal family and just like the rest of everybody else who is involved in this nonsense... It's never about the survivors with, this, with these people. It's all about the money or saving face or making sure we're invited back to polite society. That's all they care about. Meanwhile, these survivors are, you know, they're struggling on a daily basis. Give them their dough. In their filing seeking to pay the lawyers for Keller Hall's Ferguson Kroblin PLLC, the executors explained why they sought to pay them at the rate of $500 an hour for their work. Virgin Island courts generally generally have allowed reimbursement rates between $150 to $400 an hour, executors acknowledged. I mean, really? $500 an hour for their work? For what at this point? I mean, for what at this point? It's just siphoning money off from the, the survivors. And I've said it from the beginning. All of this should be shut down. Everything shut down right away. Not one more dollar spent out of Jeffrey Epstein's fund. Not to pay these lawyers. None of it. Shut it down, freeze that money, and the second that it goes to trial and these girls, and we figure out who's getting what, then the money can be dispersed. But until then, not one single penny should be spent. They also spelled out what is at stake in the fight over the estate and why it is already so complicated. Epstein used trust to protect his wealth and his investments were those of the ultra-wealthy not available to ordinary investors right there stop. Why are they not available to ordinary investors? Why is it only the ultra-wealthy get these protections? Could it be the two-tiered justice system folks rearing its ugly head once again for us to see all of its gross, disgusting teeth? Oh, that's exactly what's going on. One set of rules for them and another set of rules for you and I. Isn't it beautiful, folks? Isn't it just grand? In justifying the high compensation, the executors said the Keller Hall's law firm had intimate knowledge of Epstein's complex holdings, which included significant sums of cash, multiple entities, fixed income investments, equities, ownership interests, hedge funds, and private equity investments, valuable personal property, and real and personal property held in or through various corporate holding and operating entities. Folks. You know what that means? Let me, let me put that to you in normal people speak. He had a bunch of shell companies that he was doing business out of that he was able to launder money through. And him, Ghislaine Maxwell, everybody who's ever accepted one single nickel from Jeffrey Epstein should have to come forward and speak, should have to be brought in 
for a talk. Because guess what? If you accepted one single cent from Jeffrey Epstein, you were a participant in an ongoing criminal conspiracy, folks. And that falls directly under RICO. The question is, will we ever see it? If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. If you would like to help support the podcast, you can do that by clicking on the GoFundMe link, which is in the description box. More than halfway to our goal. Thank you so much to everybody who donated so far, to everybody who supports the podcast. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, I will be back later on with a daily drop. And also, like I was telling you on the podcast yesterday, uh, Lee, who is uh, one of my uh, buddies and a co-producer of the station here at uh, Perfect Blue, we uh, did a new little podcast called Dead Celeb, where we discuss the impact of celebrities uh, after they have died on the culture of the world. And in the first episode, we talked about Neil Peart and uh, Kobe Bryant. So if that's something you're interested in, you can check it out right here on our uh, platform. Give it a listen. Tell us what you think. Obviously, it's uh, you know something new, something Lee wanted to try out. And I am always on board to hop onto a podcast and run my big fat yap. <laughs> All right, everybody. Enjoy your Friday. Check that out. And I will be back with a daily drop. Or if something, you know, transpires during the afternoon, I will be back then to cover it. All right, everybody, enjoy your Friday.